How you going YouTubers and welcome to the channel. Here we have today a 1976 HX Holden Ute. I picked this up, this is one of a pair. Um, we're going to get it up and running and driving. This is something I've really wanted to do even before the channel started. Uh, for years I've watched other channels do it over in the States. Um, I haven't seen a lot of cars being revived in that kind of style over here in Australia. so. Hopefully this is one of many. All right, here it is in the flesh. It's, uh, it's missing the doors, of course. They're in the back. Got a little bit of rust in the uh, sill panels and in the bulkhead there. Quarters look all right. They're fairly straight. Bit of rust in there. Going to change that tire. Got some parts in the back, that's always welcomed. Always. Got a tailgate. Got a door that's, you know, it's, it's not that great, but this door, probably do something with. Nice cone, that's getting hung up in the shed for a uh, future project. So I got a full length center console there. Also a bit of wood. Never know when I might need that. I think that's half a tie down there too. This tire's got air in it, happy about that. That lower quarter's a quarter. Um, this still again is, you know, she's a bit rough. Bit of rust in the old uh, cow panel. The roof is hit and miss. There's a bit of rust there and over there. Bonnet's great. Starting to break here. But I think that's just the age of them. Bumper's really good apart from someone drilled a hole in it there. Under the bonnet. We've got something special under here. Oh. Oh. We have a Holden 173 in here. If you're wondering what that wire noise was, that's the uh, bonnet latch. That's fine. It's in the way of the fan though. Yeah, she's she's not much to ride home about. I did uh did a little bit of work on it just before, but my uh mic wasn't on apparently and I cleaned the points and checked for spark and whatnot and it you know, had spark at the points. So uh after this bit it'll take off from where the mic wanted to work. You got a uh Few things loose on it. Well, I think I know what the problem is. I'll bring you in. Oh, that's my finger. If I move this guy out of the way, stay there. So he needs to come out. So let's rip him out. All right. The other car had one of these in it, which I didn't understand why, but now maybe I do. I've got this and I've got this. It's, this screw's coming out. All right. So that's him out. That was not going to be helping our situation at all. So I'm going to file this. Oops. I put the new one in and I have no idea how to do it. I would like to know why it's not starting from the key. But it's 33 degrees and there's a rain cloud ab above me, so. What are you doing? Jesus Christ, my fucking ear. I don't even know where that backfire came from. Let's do 
out of smoking. Hmm. What's that? Spark there. You guys couldn't say it, sorry. Hmm. It's got spark. Even dangerously now. That slow and then it started getting fast it was a bit scary. Um, they're not meant to do that. Oh, this is the last time I'm doing it because, uh, yeah. Gonna have to check the timing on it because it, it, it's got spark, it's got fuel. I should have had a, at least a bark or something. I can turn the dizzy. Mm. Let's just try that. I shouldn't be moving, be able to move that busy. Fucking got it. Fucking got it. Straight away. That is why you do up your dizzy plant. Oh, that started straight away. Alrighty, let's go. Yeah, the exhaust is uh, hard up against the cross member, and uh, yeah, that's the exhaust hitting on that side. Let's do it again. Why not? This isn't my fuel. For some reason that choke's shutting itself. 
breathing really bad. I don't know if you can pick that up in the video, but... tomorrow smoking more than you nan at bingo all right so now it's time for me to put all the other stuff on we'll get oh fucking jesus that's hot don't touch the end of the screwdriver after you've been sticking it in there because it is hot all right so that's it i had it running idling for a second there with what it had in the bowls um there was a very nasty knocking noise but it was hollow you could hear it was a noise and that was the uh exhaust hitting the cross member um i'm not going to get you down there underneath and looking at it so i just just take my word for it um it is breathing heavily out of where the pcv would be but it it, it starts and fires up really quickly like I don't know how long this thing's been sitting for, but, you know, I'm very happy with that for the condition of the motor. And we really didn't do a lot. I mean, I cleaned points, I cleaned the inside of the cap, the rotor, and I changed that condenser with one that came in the other car that I bought. So next thing for me is I'm going to uh, bolt up all the rest of the stuff that I need to do, you know, the alt motor, the belts, the radiator. Probably won't put water in it straight away, just in case it's got a blind head gasket. I've noticed a lot of the times, if you, um, I'm going to shut that off, just in case, we have uh, water. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of cars that if, um, they'll run like this, and as soon as you put water in them, they'll go straight in that bores, and then you just get a very slow, woo, 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 woo. So yeah, I might not put water in it till the very end um i wouldn't bother wasting my money on coolant with this but maybe water we'll see how we go um it has got a nasty manifold leak i can see it leaking you know several of the exhaust ports but yeah it, it, it is what it is you know we dragged this out and you know i'm just ecstatic that it sat there and ran for a couple of seconds with what it had in the bowl you know i'm gonna get another fuel pump and make a nut make a uh better fuel system than me just bottle feeding it because uh I, ca I can't do that and drive it there's just no way so uh yeah i also gotta block this off this would be for the heaters um so yeah i'm gonna have to block that off i'm gonna have to you know obviously for future proofing things I'm gonna have to get a barb and stick it there in the manifold so that I can have a vacuum going with the booster. I'm gonna to dig up a bloody master cylinder. But there's, there's not a lot to get it running. Pretty much ready to go. Um, I've just gotta find a master, but I can test the gearbox before I have to worry about the brakes. So I'm probably gonna do that. So I've also got this off. I'm going to um, do my hot wire, put my button on, and then I'm going to hook up a fuel source to that and then see if I can get this fuel pump to work. Just try again before I pull it out. Who knows, it might shock back into life. Probably not, but we'll give it a try anyway. So we'll come back to it when it's all ready. All right, let's test this fuel pump because that's the only thing stopping this car from driving right now. Battery's in. I might get struck by lightning. We got fuel and we got my old man's tool. So pretty much what this does, this bit clips onto your, onto your starter and this alligator clip goes to the positive on the battery and you just press a button when you want to start it. It's, uh, I can't take credit for it, it's um, all him. He's a pretty clever guy when he wants to be. Makes things a bit safer than shooting sparks out like I was. Oh. Well, 
And this car's got extractors on it. I don't think I've ever done this on a six cylinder. You on me? Ryan again. Save the camera or try and start the car. You better believe I'm going to try and start the car. I really don't want to change a starter. So that last little bit was a bit dramatic. Managed to come back out here when the rain wasn't as heavy and tightened up that nut on the starter and gave it a couple of cracks with a hammer. Keyed it over and found out the fuel pump was working, so very happy about that. Um, after that, and I could get fuel to the carb, I noticed that the uh, pump in the carb wasn't pumping fuel, so I swapped that over, and now we've got another carb on it, the proper carb and uh, we should be good to go. Hopefully I can get fuel in the bowl and it will fill the bowl up and we can uh, keep it idling for a bit longer. So took the battery up. It's definitely hooked up. All right, I'm gonna try with not, not pumping the accelerator. Fuel in there. Oop. Put a bit of fuel in there. Oh, there's barely anything in there. Might have to change that. That's, that's not going to run for very long. Let's test this carb though. Ah oh, yes, this old chestnut. That's 
keep running off the tank. That's running off the tank. All right, I'm gonna throw these tires in the back and then we're gonna move it off from its resting ground. It won't go in the gear. What the? Alrighty, I've been playing with this thing all day and uh, working on the car as well. I've adjusted the clutch as much as I can, swapped the cable and uh, I got a lot more adjustment out of that one, but well, a lot less actually, because it wasn't stretched. But um, yeah, I didn't get anywhere with the clutch. So I made the thinking the clutch in this thing is frozen. It's not having a bar of it at all. Mind you, I did get the clutch pedal to feel a lot better than what it did. But obviously this needs a bit more work than what I've got or what I've put into it, but uh, I'm going to have to chalk this one up as a, uh, as a loss, or a half win, I'll call it that. I'll give myself that because it's my first one, or well, first one videoed anyway. I got this motor running. Um, this motor should not run. I mean, it breathes heavily. It, um, the starter keeps sticking. It's just really old and tired. You can hear it when I, in all those um, bits of me trying the starter, how it was galloping, how it would go fast and slow. That's just, you know, that's that's not what you want at all. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to put some fuel in it. I'm going to run it, do a final send off to this thing because this is a good little motor. You know, even though it's absolutely knackered, it still keeps going. And you know what, that's... That's so let's get let's get some fuel in this thing. Way too much fuel, like always. One, two, three, it's an old car. Listen to it. Uh... And I think that's it for this old girl. All right, so if you thought I was going to stop at one failed revival, you're wrong. That was a bit dramatic. But I will stop at two failed revivals. Here we have a 1971 or 72, I haven't decoded it, HQ Holden Ute. Now, when you think of rusty Holden Ute, I don't know about you guys, but this is 100% what comes to mind. A rusty and sunburnt HQ Belmont U. This thing's rusty as, it's been beaten to death, but I'm gonna see if I can get this thing running and driving this time. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. All right, now this thing looks like it's ran in the last 
10 to 20 years. It doesn't look too bad, which is good news for me because I thought the other one looked bad and it ran. But um, going over this car, the radiator's got a date here from when it was reconned in 2004. Three out of four of the tyres are new. Don't know why you'd replace three, but they're dated 2005. Um, the motor's a 186, so it's obviously been replaced. We've got a three speed on the floor this time, opposed to on the tree. This one's got a full exhaust. Well, it dumps at the diff, but it's a bit longer than the last car. And uh, unpowered drum front brakes, no worries. It's not going to be stopping very fast. This motor's a 186. I've dated this. It's got 186p on the on the block, which I looked up, and that comes up as between HK and HG. So this isn't the right motor for this car. But saying that, they're still a good little motor. So there's a few things on this motor that um, are a telltale sign that this thing's ran in the last couple of years. So I'll bring you in and you can have a look. Besides being covered in oil, it's uh, got new leads. Plugs look fairly new. Whoop, punched my camera. They look like they've been replaced. Battery looks fairly new, just kidding. That's my battery. Um, not so much to say. The only thing that I have noticed is uh, that which is crushed. So that's probably not helping the situation here. Also, you'd notice this if you're a Vice Grip Garage follower or subscriber. This is what Derek calls the service slope. Normally he puts a uh, fuel filter in there. So this is like a poor man's version, but that tells me that alone that this car's been ran in the last couple of years. So I'm not gonna try and run it off the tank. I'm gonna put my tank here like I do and some fuel on, put some fuel down the carb, and we're, we're gonna see what happens. The only problem I do have, apart from this newspaper and lamb's wool seat cover, is the ignition's locked, and uh, I don't have a dash. You can tell it's a Belmont because it's, it's basic, very basic. But the way around that is I can push and pull on that and that will start the car, hopefully. So let's put some fuel in it. I've already checked oil. I've already checked coolant. It doesn't have any coolant in it. We're in the mid north here. So if a car sits, it's just going to disappear in the first summer or second summer or 10 summers. Who knows? But Let's get some fuel in it and see if she'll crank over. Changing that coil plug though, because that's not going to help the situation at all. All right, let's. Whoa. Why did they put it down like that? This is not off to a good start already. It's got the. Uh, on it and I didn't bring pliers. I brought vice grips because you know they're like a adjustable spanner. Got that off. There. Oh, There's two on there. Just about cut me hand on it. Well that's even that's I really wanted that fuel steel. Why would you put two house clamps on there? Alright. Oh, yeah. That fuel line's about 100 years old. I should have moved. I moved the hose clamp right where I've put my hand to twist it. Not smart by me. Okay. 
maybe that's why it had that. Had the loop in it. Jeez. Now I'm going to do the right thing and not put a hose clamp on there. Probably should though. Whew. That was excessive. Oh. This is our HQ, so you can just pull that straight off. All right, this one doesn't have extractors on it either. I am going to put my button on it just so that while I, I do the initial start, I can see and hear what's going on. I don't have to try and look in from the uh, from the cab. Ow! That's fine. Put you on there. Pull it. That probably won't work because I don't have a hot wire. It doesn't need to be on the bottom one. There we go. Beautiful. That was a very good start. It's absolutely pissing out the car there. Now I did pick up another coil lead, so I'm going to quickly replace that before we get started here. Even though I've just put fuel in the car bay and it's leaking out the base, not very well thought through on me. All right. Well, that's a fantastic start. I wonder if it's because some idiot put this on backwards. Not naming any names. Hmm. Do you know what we're not going to worry about? Fuel pump pumping. sound good at all. I can hear something knocking in there already. I wonder if it's not starting because the ignition. All right, that was a great start to things. Time for battery number two. I've killed this one already. All right, so this morning I finally ripped off the cap. I got it to top dead center. How I did that was I lined it up on my balancer. As you can see, there is a mark there already on the balancer. Um, ripped my number one plug out, put a screwdriver in there and make sure it was on top. Um, number one is meant to point off like this on points on a six cylinder as you can see that's number five so they had it set up when number one was on top dead center um, they had the rotor button 
set up at number five. So that could 100% be the problem with the with the cap and the, the firing order. Also got to go over the firing order after this. Um, so what I did was I pulled the cap off, lifted up the dizzy, set it to number one, which would be like that. It's actually still like that. If we rip him off, I haven't turned it over yet. So number one's there. Um, really, in a nutshell, to do this properly, I should have redone my cap so that number one was here because as you can see there is a mark here that the rotor button is meant to meet up with but doing that I'd have to redo all my cables and um, you know I didn't really want to do that just in case this didn't start. The rotor button's sitting at number one while it's at top dead center and it's at it's at zero currently on the um harmonic balancer so i've still got room to adjust it but i think that will be a lot better than it the rotor button sitting at number five when number one's at top dead center so I'm going to hook my battery up to it. I'm not going to put any fuel in it just in case it's 180 out. I didn't take off the rocker cover and check the valves to say. So it could well and truly be 180 out or they could have just messed up with the firing order or both. So we'll hook a battery up to it and check. All right, let's see if we got this timing right. Too simple. Jesus, that runs like a top. Kept running. It did. Beautiful. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get a constant fuel source now. All right, take two. I think my hot wire was in the wrong spot and I wasn't getting stuck. <laughs> the choke on to keep it running um i'm gonna try it for some gears if i let it just idle by itself without the choke it'll just conk out sorry car
Jesus. I can't believe that. Even the alternator was alternating. The first in my book. And it fucking zapped me. So here's my next problem. If you'll come with me. Sorry, car. I'm gonna apply my foot on the brake. But as you can see. Nothing's moving. What I'm thinking is the wheel cylinders are gone and it's uh not mo it's or and this is gone because it is not moving any fluid at all. Which if there was air there'd be bubbles pop bubbling out of there. But it should be shooting fluid out as I'm pushing down on the brake pedal and I'm not getting anything, so we have no brakes. I don't want to go out. I don't want to drag it up to the shed, I should say. Take off the wheels, find out it's got four blown wheel cylinders and buy them for this because I'll end up buying them. I'll drive the car for five minutes and then it'll sit around for a million years. So, not an option. So that is going to be a wrap up of my first revival. Got one running, but not driving. And I got the second one running and driving. Um, only drive it, drive it for a short amount of time. It's got no brakes. It's quite warm out here and quite dry. So I don't really want to drive it more than, uh, than I should be. But super happy with this one. It didn't look like it was going to run for a while there. I managed to chase it down to a ignition problem so we got it sorted in the end as for that one we had a frozen clutch or seized i'm not quite sure i have to pull the box off at some stage and check but yeah that's a wrap up for my first ever revival proper revival so if you like the video make sure to leave a like leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and until next time cheers